What's going live? We're live. Hey, good morning. We're live. This is the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. And as normal, it's not 5, 5 a.m. because yesterday was a long day here in, the, here in the States. It's about 826. This is our 460th episode. So I did want to share something. Um, some fun. I don't know, talk agile and scrum, right? Another controversial issue. Ah, controversy, disagreement, conflict. Wow. But I'm not talking about that today. But anyway, I am Greg Master, Scrum Master, and Agile Coach. And here we talk about Scrum and Agile in a practical, tactical way, getting value to the customer, and in a way of getting you home in a decent time, not working 60, 80 hours a week, huh? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be awesome. And have some fun along the way. Uh, fun news, I hope, is there's supposed to be a rocket launch today, later this afternoon. ULA is supposed to launch, launch a rocket. I want to see it. I haven't seen it launch, so I'm kind of curious. Um, stuff going on in Texas with SpaceX. I think SpaceX has launched something in a couple of days. So, huh? For those who like rockets, and we do the rockets in the Coke thing, hey, it's out there. Um, but from an Azure perspective, I'm not going to talk about the election, though I will say there's always fun <laughs> on election day. Took the whole day off to support people and make sure people um, get a chance not to be pressured. Anyway, but I want to talk about a different controversial subject. I want to talk about points, no points, hours, counts, the whole well, I'm going to take two points of it, talk about a couple things, just share some stuff. But controversy besides election stuff because makes me not tired of election stuff, to be honest with you. So let's talk about Scrum and Agile and points and stuff that everybody has to have a battle against. And one likes one, one doesn't like one. So I'm going to give you a couple points on my, my thoughts. So I'm going to talk about two things. I love people who don't want to take count points but want you to log hours. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And my com my thought about ours. Um, and then why I like story points first counts and how I use them. And be interesting on what I have. Maybe I don't know. We'll talk about it. Yesterday I get is I got some I got some dislikes. I don't know if those are the Coke Mentos people or not. Or the people that actually like talk scrum and agile. Can't tell on YouTube, by the way. Um so first thing. Um People who, agile coaches, scrum masters, who don't want to do points, right? They say, I don't like points, I don't point. But they're the first ones to say, but I want you to track your hours. I don't want you to do points. I don't want you to estimate points at all. But I want you to log how many hours you spend on work. Well, I don't know what kind of value that adds. And then you get really into the thing. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Because if I was a developer, right, and you told me you want me to log my hours. How many hours a day you work? Let's say uh, after all the ceremony stuff, you got six hours per se in an eight hour day to do what you do because you do refinement, you do the planning sessions, you do all that. So on average is about six hours a day. First day, it's a lot less last day, less in the middle of the weeks, probably more like seven hours on average. You can spend on stuff. So if I was doing, I just draw a little chart with the hours, right? My burn down chart. And this is why when they do it, I'm like, okay, you want to do hours? Well, apparently I could only work seven hours a day. So theoretically, my team, we're tracking hours. I got hours, and I got like days of the week, right, for days. And this is like your sprint, boom, 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 boom. Well, then every day, I'm going to go down like this no matter what. You know why? Because I'm tracking hours. So if I track hours, theoretically, I'm spending – you know, six to seven hours per day. What the hell value does that give me? It doesn't track anything got done. It doesn't provide any. I don't. You worked, right? You didn't like go play. Um, um, ah, I don't know. Croquet. I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, Maybe went out, did something, I don't know, but every day. But so, no matter what, if you track hours, theoretically, it's a straight line because you do six, seven hours a day every day, and it's going to be down like that. So, I don't think tracking hours on a burn down chart help you in the least 
bit. That's my controversial thing because I would do that. And that's what you get every time. So why the freak even do this chart if you're just going to track hours and how much you get done? They didn't do any hours on something. Now, the only thing hours would track is like, you know, rather than span six hours, maybe this number is more like two to three hours of dev time and test time. But I don't need to do a burn down track to do the analysis on that. Why the hell am I spending only two to three hours a day doing dev and test? Why? Right? I don't need a burn down chart to investigate that. Got it? I need to find out. I need to do a calendar and outlook. I need to see outlook or whatever you use for your calendar or calendar. I know it's a Microsoft thing. Whatever your calendar system is, you know, you got to go see that one and see how many meetings people are putting in there that are preventing from actually spending some quality time coding and testing stuff, right? Is, is that a problem? But maybe it's group work. You can log group work. I'm working group stuff. I'm working on my stories with other people in the group. I'm still getting this. So if you track hours, a burn down chart to me is absolutely freaking useless. Anybody who tracks it, I don't know why you do. To be honest with you, it's a waste of time. But I hope I demonstrate that, that it's just a her down no matter what. I mean, half your team's off, then, then half your team's off on vacation. Like if they have a holiday or they go elections or, you know, we got, uh, Den was it Denali? We've got a big Indian holiday coming up. Thanksgiving, you know? <laughs> it doesn't, tracking hours doesn't really give you anything during the holiday period. I mean, you can estimate how many hours you're available to work to help you with your capacity, but tracking it on a burn down chart, it's a waste of time. Okay. Just being honest with you. Okay. Now, I hope I help share that one. Now, my other thing I want to show why do I like story points versus counts? Okay. Now, I want to be clear, and I wrote this on my little thing just so I can remember and when I do that, the light changes. Um, Organizational-wise, I hate points and how organizations from an enterprise level look at points. Played up, I agree. It gets abused. Teams get compared by points and how much work gets done. Don't like it. Team-wise is different. Now, see, this is where agile is agile versus enterprise, PMP, PMO, organizational tracking, the agile accountants, okay? See, the agile accountants love story points in the organization level. But from a team, which I don't like, but from a team, story points are valuable. And why do I say that? Okay. So I like it because here's my thing. It keeps the team from picking all the easy stories. And for me as a scrum master, or someone helps, you know, uh, facilitating getting stuff done in, in a time box, right? So if you have a lot of small stuff, and some big stuff. What I like about if I just do counts, I can't tell the difference. One's more complicated or not. Me being a dumb scrum master, scrum masters are smart, but let's say I'm going to be the naive scrum master. I am me, Greg Master. I'm not talking about anybody else out there. Me, Greg Master. Just coming in into a team, if I just do counts, I can't tell whether something's more complex, difficult, take more time, need more. Um, collaboration, whatever the team wants to establish that because it's just everything is considered the same. So you can have a story that takes a half day um, and you can have a lot of them, but I can't tell the difference between that and something that's more complicated. So story points helps people like me who may not know technically what is entailed into the job. So that and other people in the team may not understand some things and you do that. That's where story points help at the team level. I'm not talking organization level, because, again, those are the agile accountants out there in the organization level, which I disagree with. And I don't like what they do with it. For me as an agile coach, I like being able to see how things are going, who's doing what work. So, like, if the whole team just takes all the easy stories, like the one pointers, the first couple of days of the sprint, I go, wait a minute. You got some five-pointer stories that are theoretically more complex, more things, but you're not starting any of them. 
you should be doing some of those five point stories in the beginning of the sprint. That's where I like having the points, right? That's where that comes in real value. So where we need to look at it from a team perspective, I think points help. I think help points, and even from a team perspective, they go, oh, yeah, we just took all the easy jobs. Well, that's not good because we got a couple complex ones. We need to move them to the front. And from a quick, easy visual, because I don't want teams, I don't want my dev teams and my my testers to have to read the details of every story every time they look at it, try to assess which one to pick up. I want them to be, boom, hey, I'll take this five point. Hey, I'll take this two point. Hey, I'll take the one point, and I'll just bring it in. Because I know we want to do it early. I want to get it started and let the team, hey, I'm taking this complex problem that we all know we kind of grade as a little complex. I'm going to start it today at the beginning of the sprint. So in case I get stuck or I need a little more help and it's going to take a little more effort because we did bump it up because of risk, because we never did it before, that I can get that done early. So that's where I think counts and points from a team level perspective make more sense. And it gets abused by the agile accountants at the organization level. But from a team, as a scrum master, as a teammate, I like having that mix so that here's the other thing. There's some people out there who will pick all the easy ones. Like, look at all this stuff I got done. I got all this stuff done. But it was half-day work stuff. It was something that was very not complex. It's something we needed to get done, but it really wasn't that bad. And it, is that really fair to the other one? So now maybe an experienced person or a junior person gets stuck with the real difficult ones because somebody in the teams keeps picking the easy pickings called cherry picking. Have you ever heard the word cherry picking? That's where you pick the cherry because <laughs> it's really ripe and really good and leave all the rotten fruit <laughs> for everybody else to take care of. Story points helps mitigate that effort. So there's a battle. I figured to do something controversial besides elections. So I talked about points and non-pointing, right? It's team level, I like the points. I don't like teams take a lot of effort in it. They just compare what they did before to something unknown. They bump it up a little bit. That's it. Story pointing takes should take less than 30 seconds. It really doesn't take a lot of time. When people start analyzing, well, how many hours? How many things are doing? That, the, don't do the hour estimates, right? It's just, just is it the same as something we did before. Is it unknown that we don't know about? Is it risky because don't know or we don't have enough information, then you bump up the points. If it's something we've done every time you lower the points because it's something we know, we, we it's established, it's something we just have to do every sprint, no big deal. That anybody on the team can do. It's like, So a one-point story should be anything that anybody on the team should do. Oh, you know what? Maybe we'll do that next time because I think I that, that, that's my logic on that one. So I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. With that, we're about the 13 minute mark. Our show is within the 15 minutes um, as a daily scrum. And uh, I want to thank you all for, you know, everything you do and what you do out there in the scrum world and keep the ideas flowing. Uh, there's always stuff going on out there. If you have any ideas you want me to talk about or suggest, please feel free. And you know what? Have a good day scrumming. <laughs> We'll get through all this stuff and we'll see where it comes out tomorrow, right? The world won't end and we'll all live on, I hope, unless you're sick. But if you're sick, I pray for you and hope everything gets better and you get well soon. Because I know the world is really getting impacted by um, the COVID thing and it's new in the world. And I just hope everybody does well. With that, thumbs up. Happy scrumming. Ring the little bell. So if stuff gets out, you get notices, you know, linked up on LinkedIn. Feel free to send me stuff, any thoughts, any questions. If you have things you just want to email, I'll give you feedback if I can. If I have any ideas, I'll give you some links and people I know and what's out there, and we'll go from there. With that, take care. Have a great day. Enjoy your day. Bye. See ya.